Okay. Hello. It's going to happen. The brothers couldn't say, well, Lord, that's against my nature. Do it. So he commanded a woman, a widow woman there to sustain him. So he arose and he shifted his position to Zerubbabel. The anointing had just now moved. All right. He arose and went to Zerubbabel. And when he came to the gate of the city, behold, guess what he ran into? A widow woman. Now, you notice what I notice about this? God says that I have commanded a widow woman to, to, to sustain you there. And guess what? The, women, the widow woman don't even know she's supposed to be doing it. Watch. She don't even know nothing about it yet. <laughs> now, I'll tell you the secret of that one as I go on. Don't enlighten of that one as I go. Because it ain't a secret. So he said, he behold, a woman that was there gathering of sticks, and he called her to her and said, do what? Fetch, Fetch me. I pray thee, thee, what? A little, a little water. water in the vessel that I may drink. And as she was going to fetch it, I told him from Mississippi. As she was going to fetch it, he called to her and said, What? Bring me, bring I, pray me I pray thee, a morsel of bread in thy hand. And she said, Watch this, as the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake, but a handful of meal in a barrel, and a little oil in, in a cruise. And behold, I'm gathering two sticks. I don't need a big fire. Because I ain't got much to cook. <laughs> that I may go in and dress it for me and my son that we may eat and what? Die. Now why in the world would God command a woman on her last meal to take care of this man that he can call budgets and birds to take care of? Now why in the world is he going to mess with this woman? How come this woman can't enjoy her last meal, her and her son, and die? But guess what? Because that wasn't the plan that God had for her. God has commanded her to do something, and it has not yet registered in her spirit. <laughs> you know what? You know what that's saying to me? That, that sometime in our life, we got to learn how to move out of obedience and not necessarily out of faith. You're talking. Hello. All right. Some things we ain't going to understand. We just got to be what? Obedient. Say it again. Obedient. Obedient. Because the Bible says obedience is better than what? Sacrifice. Sacrifice. God looks at obedience like he looks at faith. Because anytime you just do what God tells you to do, whether you understand it or not, it will work. Yes. You might not believe it. Just what? Do it. So, he said to her, she said to him, listen, all I got is just enough for me and my son, and the position that we're in is that we're going to eat this and die. We're on our last toast. Last toast. Verse 13. And Elijah said unto her, what? Fear not. Fear not. Go and do. Go and what? Do. do. Now watch what takes place now. Because when you're talking about being in position, position always calls for movement. All right. Because we, never, we do not serve a God that stands still. God is always on the move. Yes. Hello. That's what I mean by when, when the anointing shifts. God always shifts. And you got to be sensitive to the shifting of God. Because when the changing of God happens, because everything don't remain the same. Amen. Hello? There's some things happening even in the church world today. The people leaving this earth, God is moving and shifting. I think Bishop Baylor spoke of it the other day concerning the, 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 the God over, over this area here in St. Louis. 